So let's implement our first algorithm using the Flame at Lab uh, API. And what exactly I mean by that, you will see in a minute. We have this algorithm on the left, which implements a matrix vector multiply, adding the result to vector y. And what we would like to do is create code that looks very much like this. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to click here on this link that says Spark. So that opens up this web page that we call the Spark web page. And what you want to do is implement a function that we are going to call mvmult for matrix vector multiplication. It's an unblocked algorithm. What a blocked algorithm is, you'll find out later in the course. And we're going to implement variant number one. How many operands do we have? Well, we have three operands, so we'll change that. We have A, X, and Y. And A is a matrix that we're going to march through from left to right. So we pick from left to right. And it's an input. Then we have a vector X, which is a vector that we march through from top to bottom. And it's input. And then we have a vector Y that we don't march through at all. So we pick none. And it's input and output because we're going to update it. And notice that now on the right, we end up with some MATLAB code that uses a bunch of routines that are part of our Flame at Lab um, API, application programming interface, which is really just some syntactic sugar that we've sprinkled on top of the MATLAB language. Okay, so what do you do with this? Well, you take this, you copy it, you start up MATLAB, and now what you do is you say new function. Notice that I clicked on new and picked function. So now we have a window here in which we can create a function. Let me krill off a bunch of these other tabs here. Okay. And what we're going to do is just overwrite what by default is put there with what we just copied from the Spark web page. So what we have here now is something that sort of kind of looks like this algorithm on the left. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Let me move this over a little. And if you look carefully at what this produced and put it next to this algorithm, you'll see that there is a lot of uh, similarity. And hopefully it's intuitive enough that you just kind of, by looking at it, understand. The only thing that we did not automatically generate is this update here in the middle. And for that over here, we will create, do a call to, actually we will simply say y is updated with chi1 times a1 plus y. And if you look up here, you'll understand what all of these different pieces of the vector are. Better put a semicolon on it because otherwise it will keep printing things out. Now what you would want to do is take this to wherever you put uh, your laugh NLA directory, go to programming. Uh, I already created a subdirectory chapter 01 but you should do so yourself otherwise if it's not there. Now I already had tried this so I'm going to erase what's there. Oops, let's see, can I erase this? I can delete this and now over here I can click in the editor window and I can say save and then it will by default give this name. Now where do I want to save this? I want to save this in the directory called chapter 01 and I simply save it. Okay and notice that it shows up on the left here. Now the other thing I'm going to have to do is set the path to the functions that we have implemented that are all of these routines that we use to make our code so pretty. So how are we going to do that? Well, we click over here in the Home tab on Set Path and then we say Add with Subfolders and we maneuver ourselves to 
let's see, the lav NLA directory where you put all your stuff. You go into programming, they say chapter 01. Oops, that's not where we want to be. We want to take the directory lav, which is where all of these routines live, and open that. And now all of the routines there have been added to the path. Now, if it will let you, you should save that. For some reason on my computer, I can't, and therefore I'm going to have to add the path every time I uh, run this. So I'll simply say no, and I will say close, and I'll say no to this. And now what I can do is go into the command window and actually try out my function. And how am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to create some random matrices. So let's say random uh, 5 by 4 matrix A. Then I will want to create a random vector X that's 4 by 1. So it's the vector of length 4. And then a vector Y that's a random vector that's 5 by 1. And then I can call my routine matrix vector multiply unblocked variant 1 of A, X, Y. And make sure that you order these parameters in the same order in which you put them when you created the function. And lo and behold, it gives an output. Now, how do we know if this is actually correct? Well, we can assign the output of what we just did to a variable. And then we can check that output against using the native matrix vector multiply that MATLAB provides. And what we notice is that the result is a very small vector, because notice that these numbers here must be multiplied by 10 to the minus 15. And of course, that difference comes from the fact that the order in which we did the computation may be slightly different, and therefore there is a slight round of error. All right, so what you've just seen is, your, is a first implementation of an algorithm translated to Flame at Lab code, and I'll just let you do the other variant, uh, namely variant number two, uh, which is here on the left. Now, there's one more kind of cool thing that we have. If you go back to the statement of the homework, click on Picture Flame, And this is a little tool that we created that allows you to visualize the algorithm. So let's go back to the MATLAB. Let's actually go back to this function. Now there's a second way in which we can implement this update of the Y. Namely, we can use the laugh routine uh, Y is equal to laugh of, uh, sorry, laugh, let's see, this is an XP operation where you do chi1 times a1 added to y. And that's an alternative way of doing it that actually mirrors very closely how you would have done the same implementation using uh, the Blas library or a Blas-like library. So we go back to the command window and we again execute uh, this and then we again check whether we got the right answer we notice we still get the right answer. So the difference now is that instead of using MATLAB's uh, multiplication and addition of vectors and scalars, uh, you instead call a routine that we created called LAFXP, and in the appendix there's a list of such routines to implement the same operation. And this demonstrates the layering that you would see with MATLAB. Now the advantage to using that particular routine is that you can now take this function cut and paste it into this little utility that we call picture flame. So let's take all of this and let's paste it in. You then say load program. And notice that here on the right now, you get a matrix A, a vector X, and a vector Y. These are random matrices. In this case, they are actually um, they look like integers. And you can now do an animation of the algorithm. Notice that on the left, in red, it highlights where in the code you are. And on the right, it um, then shows you where in the matrix and or vector you actually are. 
And if so now it tests whether you're done, it goes and does the repartition, repartition of x, and it does the first computation, and it highlights in blue uh, operands that are not changed, and in red operands that are changed, and then it goes to the bottom, it moves along, and if you follow this along, you now see an animation of the algorithm. Anyway, I think you're smart enough to play with this, and hopefully uh, you'll gain some insight from this uh, exercise.